So I called my talk today, Paradigm Flipping and the Refocusing of Scientific Attention. So it sort of combines a number of things that I'm very interested in. W one of them is ADHD, that's my sort of core research interest, so attention deficit. Uh, the other is philosophy of science and scientific creativity. So uh, this is what I'm gonna try and c combine in a five minute talk. So ADHD is defined as a mental disorder marked by developmentally inappropriate levels of pervasive and persistent symptoms of inattention, hyperactivity, and impulsivity. It has an early childhood onset and is by definition impairing and distressing. According to Kuhn, of course, scientific study of ADHD and everything else is made possible only by sets of stable metatheoretical assumptions about the nature of the phenomenon being studied. Things that we take for granted about that phenomena and don't test, what he called a paradigm. In the case of ADHD, um, it's science and it's clinical practice that it drives. These are all underpinned by assumptions that come from the medical model. Notably, that ADHD is, first of all, a unitary, qualitatively distinct category, that it's the result of deficits in key normative brain functions established early in life, which in and of themselves are inherently negative and ubiquitously impairing. If we re represent this figuratively, we can look at it in this way. So we can see that ADHD, we assume that ADHD is grounded in brain dysfunction that is expressed as disorder that causes impairment. From a clinical point of view, the logic here, of course, is that we target the brain dysfunction to reduce the disorder and resolve the impairment. And from a scientific point of view, then, translational scientific point of view, it's only logical that we focus in on trying to understand these uh, uh, brain dysfunctions, their biological drivers, and their cognitive consequences. And this is where we are within the field of ADHD and have been uh, really for the last 30 or 40 years. However, under this paradigm, ADHD translational science has stalled. Uh, we face a period of crisis in our field, and so that no new science-driven uh, interventions or treatments for ADHD have emerged. This means that um, people, scientists, clinicians, and so forth, are starting to search around for alternative perspectives and new ideas to reinvigorate our search for better interventions. Now, the neurodiversity movement, which some of you may have heard about, although primarily motivated by social justice for people with neurodevelopmental conditions, also contains new assumptions about the nature and causes of ADHD and other conditions, particularly autism. This offers an opportunity for an alternative translational science paradigm with the potential to change the therapeutic goals and so refocus our scientific attention. So from a neurodiversity perspective, at the heart of this uh, perspective, this switch uh, or this flip, uh, is the rejection of the concept of disorder and the brain dysfunction that it implies and replaced by descriptions of atypical brains and differences in thinking and acting, which when confronted by what you might call non-sympathetic or non-affirmative settings and environments, uh, create negative developmental cycles. So you can see the difference between these two paradigms studying the basic, the same thing. From a clinical point of view, of course, we no longer fo focus on fixing brain dysfunction, but rather creating affirmative experiences that can 
interrupt that cycle of decline, leading to a arc of growth, we might call it. And science, of course, our scientific attention is switched from looking at the brain as the source of the dysfunction uh, to looking more at the environment, from intrinsic uh, factors to uh, extrinsic environmental factors, trying to understand the cause and the mediators, moderators, of that person-environment alignment that, uh, uh, and its relationship to developmental thriving. Just to finish, I just finished an editorial uh, uh, arguing that the paradigm flipping is a way to uh, develop new ideas to reinvigorate our field. And we're implementing this new vision within our four-year MRC program called Restar, Regulating Emotions and Strengthening Adolescent Resilience, where we're exploring the emotional lives and experiences of uh, adolescents with autism or, or ADHD uh, in an attempt to develop new interventions for those uh, people uh, to reduce the levels of depression uh, in adolescence and through into adulthood. Thank you very much.